This is part 4 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss reactive forms in Angular. There are two ways to create forms in Angular, template driven forms and reactive forms. Reactive forms are also called model driven forms. As the name implies, template driven forms are heavy on the template, meaning we create the form completely in HTML. Template driven forms are easy to build and understand. They're great for creating simple forms. However, creating complex forms using template-driven approach is not recommended as the HTML can get very complicated and messy. It's not easy to unit test template forms as most of the logic is in the HTML. We discuss template-driven forms in part 5 of Angular CRUD tutorial. Reactive forms on the other hand allow us to build the form completely in code. This is more flexible and has many benefits over template forms. For example, it's easy to add form input elements dynamically and adjust validation at runtime based on the decisions made in code. It's also easy to unit test as most of the logic and validation is in the component class. The only downside of reactive forms is that they require more code than template forms. In this video and in our upcoming videos in this series, we'll discuss everything we need to know to build complex reactive forms. In a reactive form, we create the entire form control tree in the component class code. These are the two classes that we use to create the form control tree, form group and form control. Now let's understand creating a simple reactive form with just two form controls, full name and email. First, we'll create an instance of this form group class and that will be linked with this create employee form. As you can see, this create employee form has got two input elements, full name and email. So we'll create two instances of form control class. The first instance will be linked to this full name input element and the second instance will be linked to the email input element. And the model that we create using these two classes is called the form group model and it looks like this. Notice in this form group model we have a property called employee form and this is of type form group. In the ng on init lifecycle hook, we are creating a new instance of the form group class and to its constructor, we are passing an object. And this object contains the form controls that we want as part of this form group. In our case, we want two form controls, one for full name and the other one for email. When creating child form controls, we specify a key and a value. Key here is full name which is the name of the form control and value is an instance of form control. We have another key value pair here. Email is the key and value is another instance of the form control class. So in simple terms, you can think of a form group as a collection of form controls. But keep in mind, a form group can also have another form group nested within it. We'll discuss nested form groups in our upcoming videos in this series. For now, let's go ahead and create this form group model in our create employee component class. First, let's import form group and form control types from Angular Forms. In the component class, let's create a property. Let's name it employee form. This is of type form group. In ng on init lifecycle hook, let's create a new instance of the form group class. So this dot employee form equals new form group. And to the form group constructor class, we pass an object. We want two form controls as part of this form group. So we specify a key and a value. Key is full name. And value is an instance of form control class. Similarly, another key value pair. Key in this case is email and another instance of form control class. Now let's go to the definition of this form group constructor. Notice it has got three parameters. The first parameter is here, second one and the third one. The first is a required parameter, the rest of the two parameters are optional. And this first parameter controls, it represents a collection of child controls that we want in the form group that we are creating. And each child control is represented by a key and a value. Key is a string which is the name of the control that we are creating and value is of type abstract control. But if you look at our form group, we're actually passing an instance of form control. How is that possible? Well, it turns out both form control class and form group class derive from this 
abstract control class. So the inheritance relationship allow us to pass a form control as a value to the form group constructor. So we have our form group model created. Now in the view template we need to include the required HTML to get this layout. So we want a form element, two input elements, their associated labels and a submit button. We are going to use Bootstrap to style this form. So if you are new to Bootstrap, please check out our Bootstrap tutorial. In the interest of time, I have copied the required HTML to the clipboard. So let's paste it within our create employee component view template. There is no angular in this code. This is pure HTML and some Bootstrap classes for styling. So first we have the form element and we are styling it with the bootstrap form horizontal class. Inside the form we have a bootstrap panel. So if we take a look at this create employee form, notice here we have the panel. This is the panel heading with create employee title within it and then in panel body we have the two input elements and their associated labels and in the panel footer we have the submit button. So inside the form element we have the panel and for the panel we have the panel heading with title create employee and in the panel body we have an input element and its associated label for full name and another input element and its associated label for email and then we have the panel footer in that we have the submit button. Now we need to bind the HTML form element to its associated form group instance in the component class. Notice in the HTML we have the form element and in the component class we have its corresponding form group instance. So we want to bind this form element to this form group instance and for that we use the form group directive. Similarly we want to bind the input element to its associated form control instance. For that we use form control name directive. Let's do the same thing with email input element. First let's bind this form element to its associated form group instance. The name of the property that holds the form group instance is employee form. So we are binding to a property here. Let's use square brackets and the directive is form group. So we want to bind this form element to the employee form property which holds a reference to a form group instance. Along the same lines, let's bind this full name HTML input element to its associated form control instance. The form control name is full name. So let's bind to this form control instance. For that, we use form control name directive. Here we are binding to a simple string and not to a property. So we don't need square brackets. Let's do the same thing with the email input field. At this point, let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice we don't have anything displayed on the page and if you take a look at this error message, can't bind to form group since it isn't a known property of form. The reason we are getting this error is because both these directives, form group and form control name are provided by reactive forms module and we have not yet imported this module within our Angular application. So let's do that within the root application module app module. So in app.module.ts let's import reactive forms module and let's also include it in the import array. Notice now the page is properly displayed without any errors. Now let's see how to access the data that we filled on this form in the component class. This save button that you see here is a submit button. When we click this button, submit event is raised and this form is submitted. So let's handle the submit event by using ng submit directive on the form element. So in the template on the form element, let's bind to ng submit event. We want to bind to on submit method. We don't have this method yet in the component class, so let's create that. This method is not going to return anything, so the return type is void. So on submit, we want to log this employee form, which is a form group instance. We don't want to log the entire form group. We just want to log its value property and see what we get. Let's save all our changes and then take a look at the browser. 
Let's fill out this form and click the Save button. Notice the form group value property is locked to the console. As you can see, it contains each form control name and its associated value. At the moment, our reactive form is a very simple form with just two text input elements. As we progress through this course, we'll discuss working with checkboxes, radio buttons, drop down lists, etc. We'll also discuss form validation, nested form groups, dynamically creating form controls, etc. If you want us to cover any other reactive forms related concept, please leave that as a comment on this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.